Right, so this is the second part of the lecture on um, humanistic approach uh, on personality psychology in explaining personality, uh, human personality. So the second part of this lecture, I'm going to uh, focus my explanation on uh, what is actually self-actualization, uh, the needs that uh, that famously sits at the at the top of uh, Maslow's hierarchy, uh, what it actually what actually is what it actually is and how to achieve that and what is the indication that that someone is successful in achieving uh, self-actualization so before achieving uh, self-actualization there are several conditions uh, necessary uh, to uh, satisfy before we we successful to satisfy this uh, self-actualization needs so there are four conditions that once must uh, fulfill before fulf before finally fulfilling the self-actualization uh, needs. Uh, the first condition is that we need to be free of constraints that imposed, which is imposed by the society uh, or and by ourselves. And this is why uh, achieving self-actualization only makes sense if someone already at the uh, at the uh, middle adulthood because at that stage we have reached uh, the peak of our career and the society also sees us as a f uh, full achieving uh, uh, person so that uh, we also have the flexibility to uh, be ourselves to express ourselves and we also have uh, we also possess the freedom to uh, to express uh, what we actually think and uh, how what what value we believe in and the second condition that needs to be uh, there for us before uh, before achieving self-actualization is uh, we should not be distracted by the lower order needs uh, which assume that before fulfilling the top of the hierarchy we need to uh, fulfill at least uh, partially uh, the needs uh, at the lower parts of the hierarchy. So we don't bother, uh, uh, don't bother uh, with fulfilling our physiological needs, for example. So if at the stage of, of that, if uh, if we, when we reach the middle adulthood, when and we still worried of worried of uh, fulfilling our physiological Logical needs. It's harder for us to to actually reach the self-actualization stage. And the next condition that needs to be there first before fulfilling self-actualization is we should be secure in our self-image, which means that we accept ourselves as uh, who we are, and we also have a good relationship and healthy relationship with other people which means that we already fulfilled the love and belonging needs, which is the hardest, uh, one of the hardest needs that, uh, that we should fulfill, perhaps in adolescent uh, stage. And the last condition uh, is that uh, we should have a realistic knowledge, especially uh, the knowledge about our strengths and weaknesses, which means that we... Uh, we already accept ourselves fully as who we are and we also aware our weaknesses and also our strength which means that we are we are more than ready to uh, to to improve ourselves to the next level and maslow also described um, that people who reach this self actualization stage they have completely different motivation than uh, those who who has who have not achieved this uh, this stage so what motivate them would be different so their motivation would be different from the rest of the people so these types of motivation that very different from uh, those who who have not been successful in achieving uh, in reaching that stage is that the self actualizer has a distinct type of met, uh, of motivation that he called uh, meta motivation or something uh, or sometimes he call it the be motivation or being motivation and meta motivation is completely different from the traditional idea of motivation um, maybe you still remember the idea of basic 
instinct, the instinct uh, that drives human behavior in psychoanalysis uh, eyes or uh, views. Uh, it says that, well, basically we're just um, responding to those uh, unconscious uh, motives. Uh, and those kind of idea of motivation is completely different from uh, the motivation that drives uh, self-actualizer. So this motivation goes beyond that. So it, it is not just directed to reach one goal, one specific goal, but this motivation is more like it, it is directed to personal growth. So it's completely different from the usual motivation. So uh, this meta-motivation involves, again, it maximizes one's potential. So again, it is directed toward personal growth. So it's not just responding to unconscious motives or just, um, just achieving one particular goal. And again, um, that self-actualizers, they have... Uh, they could be unmotivated too. Uh, so that's why Maslow had a list of meta needs. So those are needs uh, that uh, should be fulfilled by the self-actualizer in order to be, uh, in order to maximize their, spot, uh, their potential. And those meta needs uh, are the states of being. Uh, so, so it is more like it tries to to gain. Uh, Things like goodness, uniqueness, perfection. So it's not just uh, achieving specific goals or objects. So if self-actualizer uh, are not successful to fulfill those meta needs, it will result a condition that must look called uh, metapathology. So if if this condition happens, it will disrupt the uh, disrupt the process of achieving. Uh, uh, one's potential, so it will disrupt the whole idea of maximizing one's potential. And so that's why um, metapathology could prevent uh, people who, who, who is successful to achieve those um, self-actualization uh, self to express or even use or to fulfill their potential. And sometimes it, it could, uh, it could uh, result, uh, then become, uh, and they become uh, helpless or depressed and even they could not uh, be able to they could not uh, pinpoint the source of their uh, depressed feeling so that would be uh, the condition that he called metapathology so th this is the this is a table that lists uh, the meta needs and also the metapathology so people who already reach uh, the self-actualization needs they had to. They have to uh, fulfill uh, these needs, and if they if they fail to fulfill that, they will. It will lead to a condition that they call uh, that must look called metapathology. So, for example, if uh, a self actualizer has a uh, has a needs of perfection, for example, if they are not able to fulfill that, it will lead to a condition they will feel hopeless or they feel like nothing to work for yeah so and if they if they have uh, if they are in this condition in this metapathology condition it will prevent them to maximize and fulfill their potential and this is the the most important questions of the day so who is actually a self actualizer so what is it like people who uh, are successful to to satisfy their self, self their self actualization needs. So someone who is a self actualizer, they have an efficient perception of reality, which means that their perception of themselves are not very different from how others view them. So it's completely realistic when what others what others think about us and what we think about us uh, there are no differences between that and the second uh, characteristics of uh, a self actualizer is that they accept themselves of who they are and they accept the existence of others and the nature uh, uh, and the nature too and someone who is a self actualizer could be spontaneous they value simplicity and they become natural because well they accept 
who they are, they accept the, uh, the existence or the, the presence of other people. So they will value simplicity and spontaneity uh, better than those who are not in this condition. And the next uh, characteristics of a self-actualizer is they focus more on the problems outside themselves. Yeah. Say so, so they uh, they can be more um, they can be more effective in solving the problems. Uh, and the next characteristics is that they have a healthy sense of de detachment, which means they value privacy, and they could uh, value the time of being detached from other people in order to be more focused about uh, focus on uh, on themselves healthy healthily uh, and the next one would be a freshness of appreciation which means that they would appreciate uh, uh, creative works and they could um, be more uh, appreciative to other uh, others people uh, effort and the next characteristics uh, that is very typical in uh, in Maslow's theory, uh, he said that uh, people who reach this self-actualization uh, needs, they will have a mystical or peak experience. So this peak experience is, is really hard to describe this, uh, this kind of experience, but it involves an intense something like um, when you when you feel that your yourself is transcended to a certain level and this person would feel uh, their uh, themselves being supremely powerful and they could like release all their potential and they feel very confident about themselves and being very uh, decisive about about the problems that they uh, that they face so this peak or uh, mystical experience is almost like a religious um, spiritual experience, but it doesn't necessarily uh, that. But um, Maslow often uh, take explanation from a great artist, like perhaps uh, you said, like for example, Pablo Picasso, when he produced a great uh, artwork, he would experience such uh, such uh, such mystical uh, or peak experience. So that after that, it would it would result. I, uh, it would result of a, a great uh, art, a great, um, uh, a great, a creative, um, uh, creative uh, work. So, if you are interested in knowing more about peak experience, you just click on the link, and there is a uh, very interesting reading on uh, on detailing what actually peak experience is. And that would be the last part of this section um, and I will continue on the next section about the, the current development of this theory.